Hi everyone and welcome to Club 2, Episode 1 of Rolling in the Isles, an FM22 British Isles Journeyman series with me, the United City FM. So it's fair to say that my time at Limavady in the third tier of Northern Irish football didn't go particularly well. In the end, I resigned rather than get sacked at the back end of the first season. I still had one more game to play in the five matches to get nine points that the board challenged us to do, but I wasn't going to get the nine points. I'd already lost too many games in that five game period. So I didn't want to go across to the next season, play one match, not get the nine points and then get sacked. So I resigned at the end of the season and moved forward, have found a different job and actually, I think I've pretty much fallen on my feet. Let's have a look. So, welcome to Ballin and Mallard United, or Ball in a Mallard? That doesn't sound great, does it? But in theory, that's what it says. But anyway, I'm reliably informed it's Ballin and Mallard, um, and I'm in the second tier of Northern Irish football, and I'm not quite sure how I've managed that, to be honest. I had a lot of job interviews. I had a couple of other um, offers of jobs as well that I turned down for various reasons, primarily because of where they sat in the league that um, they were going to be asking me to play in, in terms of their pre-season um, uh, media expectations. But for this one, I've moved up a division in Northern Ireland and I've, I'm happy to stay in Northern Ireland. I feel I've got unfinished business here, but we are now in the championship in Northern Irish football and Ballin and Mallard are sitting in, I think, fourth position in terms of the media expectation for this season, which is really good. That shows that they've got something about them. We've got a couple of decent players for this level, some gaps as well, but that's just what we expect. But what this will enable me to do is from the word go, we're going to play fairly simple, but a little bit positive, and we're going to stick to it and try and get rid of the issues that we were having at Limavady. So Ballin and Mallard, here we are. We have taken over and we will see how we get on this season. So I've had a full summer, basically. I took over at the back end of last season, cleared out a few dead wood uh, in the squad itself, reshaped the side. The finances have been awful all the way through in terms of the overall balance was in the negative before I showed up. So I kind of for the first season specifically, had to dismiss that a little bit and just move past that. We've got enough uh, to stay afloat in the transfer budget and a couple of hundred pounds left in the wage budget. So we're doing all right in that. But the overall budget is something we're going to have to work on over the time that we have here, however long that turns out to be, and see if we can improve things. But just for now, I needed to set up a squad that I really thought could challenge uh, the, half, the top half of this table. So that's what we've done. There's been quite a lot of incomings because of that. I think seven in total. So let's go and check them out. So pretty much like me, you won't have too much of a clue as to who's already at the club and what gaps were needed to fill and all that kind of stuff. But hopefully this list will help you identify some of what my thinking has been in terms of where we had some gaps in the uh, particular squad that we inherited. So we bought three players in on loan and four players in on free transfers. The first one in was this guy, Aaron Burns. And the reason that we brought him in is because I needed a left-sided option. Excuse me, I didn't mean to come off that. I needed a left-sided option, but he can also play centrally as well. Uh, it's a bit of a strange one. His, his main roles all suggest that he's a central player. His best position, apparently, is a left winger. So we are actually going to play him on the left wing um, because he's got a decent amount of dribbling. He's got a, a good free kick, bit of flair in there. Pace isn't fantastic, but at 30 years old, a little bit of experience as well. He's got a good long throw on him as well, which hopefully we'll be tapping into as well. So he comes and he can basically play anywhere along that attacking midfield line for us, I would imagine. Uh, the next one is Jake Carey, right fullback. Needed options at right fullback. <clears throat> Excuse me. What you'll see 
in our tactic when we go and have a look at that in a minute is that both fullbacks right and left are not very good uh, going forward at all so we are keeping them in the defensive um, setup for their roles and we're going to ask them to be a, a bit of a, a defensive unit with the centre backs and the goalkeeper that don't really venture out but it's a theme through our fullbacks so Jake Carey reasonable again for this sort of level we're looking anywhere between about 9 and 12 is the sort of attribute uh, area that roughly we can find at this sort of level. Um, so this guy is fairly consistent across the board, which I quite like. Not so many gaps as some of the other players have got. So Jake Carey in a right fullback. Our first loan is a youngster that's going to offer rotation options in the uh, central defensive area. This guy has got lots of gaps. You can see that he has, but... In terms of heading, marking, tackling, positioning, little bit of pace, good determination, well, reasonable determination, uh, jumping reach, etc. Those are kind of the key attributes that we wanted him to have. And so he's going to provide competition for places. We'll get some game time, but won't be a mainstay always in the first 11. So that's the first of our two central defenders that we brought in. And the second one is this guy, Zach Dealey. Again, another real youngster, 17 years old. But I think this has got, uh, again, a similar feel in terms of look at what the attributes that he has got, look at what things they're in, and it fits very nicely for a reasonably good central defender. We can give this guy some game time and improve him as we go, I think. But uh, again, competition for places, quite a young group of players I've brought in in a lot of ways. And you'll see that in my goalkeeper in a minute. But I think this guy has got something about him enough to be able to play at the level we need him to play at. The next one on a free transfer is Mark McGee. And he's a, a central midfield player. Again, we needed competition for places. He'll get some game time. I don't know whether he's regularly going to be in my first team. Probably not. But we've got two central midfield players in our tactic. One that's a more holding player, one that's a more roaming player. And this guy comes and forms some competition for places in the uh, holding player role in central midfield. So Mark McGee in the club. Uh, we've also, uh, the next one is another three transfer, Dylan McCorkle. Uh, and he uh, is a left-sided player again. So uh, again, that was obviously something that I identified that we needed some competition for places down the left wing. This guy isn't fantastic and, you know, <laughs> welcome to the second tier of Northern Ireland to a point. But he's got a bit of dribbling about him, good determination and decisions, which is what attracted me to him. At least he can make a few good calls in the middle of the pitch and be up and down. He's got good enough pace, reasonable stamina, work rate is good. So he's going to help out the team a little bit. He hasn't got particularly strong attributes many other places, though. But again, competition for places. And the final one that we brought in on loan is our new goalkeeper, new number one goalkeeper. And he is only 17 years old. But we uh, lost a goalkeeper that was here previously, or who was here on loan. He went back to his parent club, couldn't keep him. So I needed to find somebody else. The actual goalkeepers at the club already were not particularly strong. We've kept one of them in as backup. But this is as good as I could find. Now, mentally speaking, other than decisions, he's fairly awful. Physically, not too bad. Bit of pace in there. Natural fitness is good. Agility, uh, not agility, acceleration is good. So he's going to move around his area pretty well and potentially get to balls first uh, as they come into the box, etc. But the goalkeeping, uh, easy for me to say, the goalkeeping attributes are actually pretty decent for this level. Handling of 12, punching of 11, so he's going to clear his lines well. Reflexes are good, 13, and the rest of it is pretty all right. So overall, this is as good as I could find. And for the level that we're playing at, not too bad, to be honest. So those are the seven that we bought in. In terms of how we're going to play, as I say, we are going to keep it really, really simple. 4-4-2. We're going to be in the positive mentality this season. We are in that top um, half of the table in terms of the favourites for this particular campaign. So it means I feel like we can actually give it a go and, and push ourselves a little bit to be on the front foot as much as is possible. 
Uh, so we're going to stay in the 4-4-2. Uh, it's very, very simple instructions. Hardly anything, really. We've left it pretty much blank. We've widened the attacking width a little bit. And we've got run at the defence a little bit and the wings particularly. Uh, in transition, we've got absolutely nothing put in in terms of instructions. Now, of course, we can add and uh, reduce stuff as we go along. But we're keeping it very simple to start with. Higher line of engagement, higher defensive line because we are one of those top four favourites for the league. So it feels like we can do that. Uh, not really pressing too much, a standard width of defence. And that's basically it to start with, which is why I've called the whole setup simples. That is the plan. Keep it simple uh, and keep it structured. So we're playing the 4-4-2. The key guy for us, I feel, in terms of our best player, is probably this guy here, Grace, in central midfield, playing as a supporting Metzala. So as Burns moves in, because he's more centrally, uh, he's more central player, if you remember, as he moves in, Grace will slightly move out and fill a little bit of that role. And as a central midfielder, I think he's pretty decent, really. 12 in passing, 13 in first touch. He's got decisions, determination, leadership and work rate all above 11. Physically, he's really good. 12 natural finish, pace is 11, stamina is 13, can get around, acceleration is 13. So this guy will be really, really useful to us and is very, very much our better player, I would imagine. We've got a reasonable sized squad. I try and work to about a 25-man squad and we've managed to do it again. So there's competition for places. We have a five-man bench in this particular division, three of which we can use at any time in the league. So that's how we're going to set up this season. And we're pretty much ready and raring to go. So if we go into the competition pages again and we uh, go, actually, you can see we've got two uh, cup competitions to be in, including, again, the Peaky Blinder Irish Cup, which I really love the name of. That's fantastic. Uh, but if we go back into the season preview, you'll see sitting in fourth position, uh, that's not too bad for us. Today's opponent, first out the gate, is Armar, who we played last season with Limavady in the, in the division below. They've been promoted. So, in theory, this should be a good opportunity to get three points on the board and start positively. The, the, um, the pre-season friendlies have gone pretty well, to be honest. As I was building a squad up, it always takes a little bit of a dip here and there whilst you lose a few players and get a few players in later in the window, etc. But we didn't lose. We lost. Uh, we didn't lose at all, should I say. We drew a couple of games, 2-2 and 3-3. But other than that, I felt like when we were at our full strength, we didn't really concede a goal and we looked pretty dangerous um, uh, playing our way in our 4-4-2. So all of it is fairly positive. I hope, to be honest, that we don't fall into the same uh, setup as we did at Limavady and it gives us a false sense of um, hope that we can achieve something and then it falls flat when we come into the competitive matches. But in theory, this is a good side for the level we're at with some OK players here and there and a couple of decent players. And we're expected to do pretty well. So let's see how we can mess it up, eh? <laughs> it's just going to happen, isn't it? Anyway, we're going to be as positive as we can. Stay on the front foot as much as possible. So first off, Armar, let's see how we get on. So we've all seen the tactic, the formation, the style of play, the setup, etc. We've seen some of the players we've brought in. The rest of the players, a bit like for me, really. I don't know them as well as I'd like just at the moment, but we'll get to know them as we move through the season. So this starting lineup isn't going to mean an awful lot to either of us, really. But for the first game uh, that we are at home for, which is good, we have Williamson in goal, Carey at right back, Curry at left back, Armstrong and McCann in central defence, Henderson and Grace in central midfield, Moorhead on the right, Burns on the left, and McGlynn and Bander up top with a bench of Dealey, Miller, Clark, Crook and McElwain. Uh, McElwain. Easy for me to say. Anyway, let's get into this first game in charge of Ballon and Mallard and see how we get on. First game of a new season at home, favourites for the game by a long stretch against a promoted side. So we've pumped the fists and I've said to them, we're favourites for a reason. Go out there, make sure they're left as to no doubt as to why that is. 
And let's see how we get on with that one. We're going to be playing mainly in a blue strip this season, just so you're aware. Um, uh, I can't remember exactly what our reserve um, kit is just at the moment. We'll find that out as we go. Uh, but yeah, the main one is a blue, all blue kit. So uh, here we go. And it's uh, Armour on the ball, but we win it back in midfield. That's really good for us. Central midfield player doing his job in terms of the... Uh, the way in which we can find a win, uh, way to win the ball back. Grace getting involved in the plate. That is a really, really good long shot by McGlynn. Uh, I think McGlynn is the other player in the media predictions as to who our best players are with Grace. So those are two that we'll be looking out for. I actually think Bander, the other striker, might be a little bit better to my mind. Um, but we're looking for both of those, McGlynn and Banda, to get goals this season. And one of them has started very, very well early on. A uh, bit of a talking to there, I think, from one of our players for the ref. Gave away a free kick for Armar. Comes off the wall. They win the ball back, but then we uh, uh, take the player out again as well. We're going to be a little bit careful of that. Don't want our discipline to go. That's a fantastic strike by the guy from Armar off the free kick. It cannons off the crossbar. Unfortunately for us, falls into the middle of the six-yard box. The goalkeeper's on the floor having dove for the free kick. And the striker responds quicker than everybody else and puts it in the back of the net for Armar. And we go back to 1-1. Um, unfortunate, I think, that one. A really good strike, but a little bit unlucky off the, um, off the cannon, off the crossbar. We had a good cross that came in there, but it was a bit looping and a little bit um, deep. And what have they managed to do there? They've completely negated our back line. We might have to reduce our back line slightly um, just by one notch potentially just to uh, take away some of the space behind us a little bit if they're going to go over the top like that. But just at the moment, I want to see if we can keep a high-ish high line uh, and make it work for us. No changes are going to be coming in the next couple of games. We've just got to bed this in and make sure that we are getting used to how I want to play, etc. before we make any of those kind of calls. But you can see, early doors, we've had a fair amount of shots at goal, more than them, more shots on target. XG rating isn't quite as high, so they've done well with what they've got. A little bit more possession, but it's coming in and out of being fairly equal. So it's not been a terrible first half by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just a little bit unfortunate that they got that one goal off of a really good original free kick shot. Five minutes to go this first half. Can we find another uh, route to goal just before half time? Let's see if we can. Time is ticking though. It looks probably unlikely. And there we go. Half time whistle goes. We get to half time at 1-1. As I say, that's not terrible, but... It's not fantastic considering they've got a better expected goals rating than we have and they're a newly promoted side. We do need to get on top of that as much as we can. So we're going to be ultra positive again. We're not going to dig them out or anything. We're going to go pump the fists again. We've been the better side. Just keep doing what you're doing. You'll be fine. We're going to click into the second half and we're going to go into the shouts and we're going to demand more from them. And let's see if we can settle down just a little bit in this second half. Keep a little bit more of the ball. Um, get them chasing shadows a little bit and not do bits like that of chucking it over the top and missing out. Fortunately, we won the second ball. And that is a really good chance. And it's a chance that goes begging. Grace on the end of a cross. And he puts the header wide of goal, attacking from that Metzala roll. That's unfortunate just at the moment, but um, signs are there that we're getting through a little bit. We've just got to make a little bit more of the chances that we get and have a little bit more quality on the end of it. We've got options on the bench. We've covered most of the different positions on the five-man bench as much as we can. Um, so there's always going to be options. That's an easy win for us in def the defensive unit. Uh, picking up the loose ball, working down the left-hand side. Grace getting involved in play. Burns over on the overlap down the left-hand side. Gets a chance to cross it, drops it back to Grace instead. Those two linking up really nicely on that far side. Can they get the cross in? He gets the cross in for Grace again. And we win that second ball again. No, we don't. We give it away straight away. And again, they've gone over the top. And again, they're in. And again, it just goes over the top of the bar. I'm seeing enough. Uh, just let's go in to our tactics page and I might reduce that line just a little bit. But let's just go and check out the pace of our two central defenders. He's on a six. So that's not great. And McCann's on 11. So McCann can cover that. 
But if Armstrong gets caught out, then we are in a little bit of trouble. So uh, let's go uh, out of possession and just move that back one. It will stretch the play just a little bit. I know, don't know whether that means I need to bring that one back into a standard line or leave it high. We'll find that out. But it just felt there's been a couple of occasions in this first um, game where they have been able to just dink it over the top. And we can't really allow that sort of space behind us. A couple of minutes from now, we'll make a few changes ourselves personnel-wise. Uh, time's ticking by really quickly, actually. So let's do that now. Go back into the tactics page and make a couple of substitutions. You can see they're playing pretty well, though, most of them. In our fullback, uh, our right fullback's not doing fantastic. Our holding midfielder uh, not doing brilliantly either. And his, um, Grace is out on his feet a little bit. I think he had a little bit of a knock through the friendlies, possibly. So we'll have to take him out. Uh, potentially so let's do that let's protect him because he's going to be vital for us moving forward so we'll bring Clark in normally he's a replacement for Henderson but we'll have to play him there so that'll be fine um, we haven't got a right fullback on we've got a left fullback on so I'm not going to replace the right fullback we are going to bring on um, a, a, a striker for McGlynn who's just had a quiet second half possibly possibly a wide man let's think about this so Moorhead and Burns both playing pretty well uh McGlynn playing decent as well but it's just about freshness and fitness really do I take Armstrong out at the back uh Dealey has he got more pace he's got more pace about him I think I'm actually going to do that we'll take the the lack of pace out from Armstrong and put Dealey in there instead and then we are going to replace one of these wide men just purely to get fresh legs in there. So we'll bring Moorhead off and bring Cook, Crook on. But Moorhead has been fantastic. The, the only reason is purely just for freshness down that right-hand side. See if we can unlock something else with a, a, a new player. So we're going to go back in the shouts. We're going to fire them up. Uh, we've been the better side in the second half in terms of chances created, etc. So we're moving up into the attacking mentality. One last effort to see if we can get through on goal and cause them a problem or two in the last 10 minutes. It will be a little bit disappointing if we only get a draw. I mean, it's not a loss, obviously, but this is a promoted side. And really, the onus was on us to try and get a win here. And it doesn't look like we're going to get it. That doesn't bode brilliantly well, does it? Unfortunately, I think there's some positives in there. We created the chances. We didn't put enough shots on target. So that's something we're going to have to work on. The XG rating um, improved over that second half. Uh, but yeah, just a little bit flat against a promoted side. Unfortunately, it wasn't like the two or three goal scoreline that I'd really wanted, to, uh, wanted it to be just to get off to a fantastic start. Positives, not too many, a couple of negatives, but we got a 1-1 draw. So there we are, first game done. It wasn't what I wanted. It is disappointing. It does give me heart palpitations that we're again going to struggle a little bit if we can't beat one of those promoted sides, but... It's really early in the season and I need to bed in this tactic. If we go and have a look at the tactic page, you'll see the familiarity of the players isn't quite at full peak yet. So we've got a bit of work to do on that one just to get that up a little bit and make them more um, aware of what it is that we're asking for them. Of course, we've got a ton of players in this squad as well that we can rotate in and out and make sure we're getting the best out of players. But individually I thought 90% of our players played really very very well we just could not put the ball in the back of the net regularly enough from the chances we created or at least on target enough anyway let's get into the schedule figure out what's coming up next episode so that's the first game done we're going to give ourselves a little bit of a chance to get properly going before we come back so we're going to come back and play Carrick I think in the league in uh, late September so that gives us one two three four five games between now and then just to get ourselves going we've got a cup game in there as well against an unknown opponent but by the time we come back against Carrick you'll uh, begin to see a picture of where we're at how we're doing what the the style of players are done for us and have we been able to get some of those three point wins 
and get ourselves up the table a bit. That's all going to, uh, we'll come back and check that out next episode. It's going to be an interesting one. I can't tell you how we're going to get on because I thought we were going to do all right at Limavady and that just didn't work out. But I am positive that we're in a good team for the division that we're in with chances to really have a proper go and see how we get on. So come and join me next episode. We'll see how we get on with uh, Bal uh, Ballon and Mallard uh, as we move forward. But until then, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and join my United City community. The more the merrier. Click that like button on this particular episode. That will help me get seen by more people. Until next time, take care of yourselves. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.